I don't have anything. Just kidding, I do, but not in my hands yet. Uh, G Fuel sent me their package, I got it in the mail, and it is the... Can anyone guess? Almost worked. They sent me the candy corn flavor. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely hate the actual candy of candy corn, but I'm up for trying anything. I mean, they sent it to me, so I might as well give it a shot. These collector boxes are cool, though. I'm gonna keep it. Uh, they gave me a shaker. I think it's a glow-in-the-dark one for Halloween. Nice, cool little trick-or-treat sticker. And, of course, the flavor. Definitely has a cool design. It's just not my flavor. Been a while since I've done one of these. All right, so we got our scoop. We got our shaker. I got G Fuel all over my desk. <laughs> all right, finished product. Okay, that's that's not good. That's bizarre. I don't like candy corn, and this tastes like candy corn, but it's not bad. I want to say like vanilla caramel, honestly, which could be the flavor of candy corn. I don't know, but I bet you this would be really good with milk. Honestly, I'd give this like a 7.5. All right, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video. I'm sure you guys know it is Wednesday, therefore we're gonna hop right into my week eight. Yes, eight. I don't get how time is moving so fast. But this will be our week eight NFL predictions. Uh, this is another week of a lot of just terrible games, honestly. But they should be competitive, as boring as some of them may seem. However, I'm gonna say there's two picks on here that I'm regretting already, but <laughs> you'll see as we get to them. One quick thing, head over to gfuel.com, use code Wyatt's World, save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. All right, so kicking off week eight, we got Thursday Night Football, and it should be a good one, but it won't be. We got the Packers visiting the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the reason I'm saying it's not going to be good when it should is because Devontae Adams, if you haven't heard, he is out. He has COVID. Not going to lie, with Adams in, I think I would pick Green Bay to dethrone Arizona because they could be the team to do it. But without Adams there, there is most certainly going to be times where they don't score when they absolutely should, and it's going to burn them. J.J. Watt said it himself, and he might not be wrong. Everybody's making excuses. The Cardinals win because of this. They win because of that. Maybe they're just a little fucking better. That could be right. I expect Robert Tanyan to get heavily involved for Green Bay, so pick him up if you have him in fantasy. Ooh, also speaking of tight end, Zach Ertz. He's looking to lead again for Arizona, not helping Green Bay at all here either. It'll still be good, it'll be competitive, it'll be worth watching, but the Arizona Cardinals will go 8-0, defeating the Green Bay Packers 27-24. Up next, starting off Sunday, here we go. Snooze fest. Well, maybe not a snooze fest, but a bad game. We got the Carolina Panthers playing the Atlanta Falcons. I can't believe I'm going to say this, especially after how highly I thought of Carolina in weeks one through three. But I'm taking Atlanta to win this game 21 to 13. I'm not convinced Carolina can win anymore, and I'm not convinced Sam Darnold remembers how to be a quarterback. This is the ultimate test for Carolina. If they lose, like, I mean, they're already kind of frauds, but they are for surely frauds. So they might want to protect their dignity. The only thing that really scares me about them and kind of the reason that I'm picking Atlanta to beat them. Daniel Jones just shredded Carolina. I mean, he didn't shred them, but he played decent against them and they're about to go up against Matt Ryan. That is a veteran you do not want to be taken lightly. I'm sorry, Carolina, but I don't think you guys got this. Anyway, moving on, we got Miami visiting Buffalo. Finally, the Bills get to play on noon again. I think it's the first time in October. Good God, I love primetime games, but Jesus. Look, I don't know what to say here other than the fact that trap games exist. I'm acknowledging the trap game. Any team can beat any team. That being said, Josh against the Dolphins in general, Josh against these Dolphins to be specific, in Buffalo, I, I think the Bills will be able to wrap this one up. Like I said, I don't want to be the guy to bite myself in the ass too hard, so I try to be respectful in games like this. Uh, Buffalo wins 28-10. to 10. They're coming off a bye. They're coming off a loss. They're going to be hungry. That team is going to be healthy for the most part. Besides Dawson Knox, they shouldn't have any issues. All right, and next game, we got the 49ers going into Chicago. Well, about that time. Snooze fest. God, this game is going to suck. Chicago is a mess. San Francisco isn't completely put together either. The only thing deterring the two teams here? Certain weeks offensively, San Francisco can look decent. Chicago offensively? Always looks like shit. There'll be scores, there'll be points, there'll be field goals, there'll be blood, there'll be sweat, there'll be tears. There'll be a bunch of sleeping people in the stands. San Francisco beats Chicago 17-7. Alright, next game we got the Steelers going into Cleveland. 
Close game, good game. I got the Browns winning 21 to 20. I don't know the status of Baker. I think Kareem's on the IR and I don't know the status of Chubb. But like we just saw, they don't need them to win. Pittsburgh, no, they're not that bad. They're starting to rebuttal, but they're also not that good. And Ben Roethlisberger is not good. I think what's going to happen is it's going to be a tug of war match pretty much the entire game. But with Ben Roethlisberger constantly being held underwater by Miles Garrett for the duration of the entire game, it should keep Pittsburgh behind Cleveland long enough for the game to finish. Won't be pretty, but this will be a very important win for either team. Moving on, we got the Philadelphia Eagles visiting the Detroit Lions. Worst game of the week by far. Not going to be as boring, I don't think, as Chicago and San Francisco. But these two teams just suck. If we could skip this game, I would. However, this is going to be my first scorching pick of the video. I have Detroit getting their first win against the Eagles this Sunday, winning 24-16. Listen, Detroit has been playing reasonably well, and Dan Campbell is a good coach. Uh, he's got a big set of balls, I'm not going to lie. He does some very questionable calls, but they work. And most importantly, Philadelphia is a team that they can beat. Now, the Eagles, they're going to put up a fight because, I mean, they have talent. Although Jalen hasn't been very good throwing the ball, they've still been scoring points. So it will be up to Detroit's defense to hold them off long enough for Goff to get and maintain that lead. But I think they will, and I think Dan Campbell is going to get a very hard-fought and much-deserved victory. All right, up next, we got Tennessee going into Indianapolis. Colts are not that bad. Carson Wentz is not that bad. A matter of fact, Carson Wentz is kind of back. You know, aside from that awful shovel pick, that was, that was fucking horrible. But other than that, he's been really good. Unfortunately for them, you know how their schedule's already been fucked? It's not going to get any better. Titans are red hot. They are tearing everyone apart right now. And much like I said with Dallas, it is going to take a monster. It's going to take a Titan, a literal Titan. <laughs> stop them. And I don't think Indy is it. Okay, moving on to the next barn burner. The Bengals are going into the Jets. The Jets are so bad, and I mean it. They are so bad. And the Bengals are really good. I can't believe that the Jets beat the Titans. I actually can't believe that. I don't know what to have this game at. I mean, it certainly could be a trap game, although I'd bet about anything on this world that the Jets won't win. Shit, I won't even give them respect. The Bengals are going to win 36 to nothing. I'll tell you what, if the Jets can beat the Bengals, I'll eat a jalapeno while playing Madden on Madden Monday. Moving on to the next barn burner, the Rams going into Houston. Jesus, this is what I'm talking about. Look, I'm going to give Goff and the Lions props. They played the Rams a billion times better than I thought they were going to. I thought they were just going to get absolutely blown out. Well, that didn't happen. It was actually competitive for most of the game. However, the Rams are going to obliterate Houston this week, okay? I don't see any scenario here where Houston can come up with the win. They're not going to compete. I'm not sure if Tyrod's going to be back. I know he's returning to practice on Wednesday, but even with his legs, it wouldn't help. Now, the Rams' D does tend to have holes in it every single game, so I will give Houston some points here. But it's going to be off of basically just luck or hopefully a Brandon Cooks touchdown for my fantasy team. I got the Rams winning 28-7. All right, now the next game we've got is New England going into the Chargers. Now that game's interesting. Bill Belichick, if you remember last year, he shut out the Chargers. It was like 40 to nothing. However, that was in Foxborough. And this Patriots team is one of those teams that is only going to play as good as they possibly can on that given day. What I mean by that is they don't exactly look like the same team every single week either. Certain weeks they're clicking a lot better on offense. Certain weeks they're looking like shit. New England would have to be much more consistent for me to be able to take them in this matchup, and they're not. You can't be putting up 23 points, then 50 points, then 12 points, then 22 points. Like, what the fuck? It'll be close, it'll be competitive because it's Bill Belichick, but the Chargers will finally get the upper hand, winning this game 24-14. Moving on, we have the Jags going into Seattle. This game is puke-worthy as well. I don't know what else to say on this one other than the Seahawks will find a way. I don't know, I just can't pick Jacksonville. It wouldn't shock me if they won at all. Now, unfortunately for Seattle, unless they start throwing the ball and doing something other than just running it up the middle, they will not find success. But I think Pete Carroll is going to be working on that game plan this week and they should have something cooked up. Seahawks hopefully win 14-10, to 10, otherwise it'd be embarrassing if they didn't. All right, next in line, we've got the Washington football team going into Denver. Washington is terrible, and Denver can score. You gotta win points to win a football game. Judging that Denver's consistently been putting up more points than shitty Washington has, I'm gonna give the Ponies a bounce-back victory here, 20-13. to 13. When is Fitzmagic coming back? Is he coming back soon? Actually, I don't even know if he'd help that team right now. Heineke, like I said, he's not even bad. It's just the easiest thing to do is blame the quarterback nowadays. So much disappointment in one fan base. 
All right, and next up, we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going into New Orleans. I got Tampa Bay winning this game 31-28, to and it will be close for no reason other than the fact that it's Tom Brady playing the Saints. On paper, Tampa Bay should smack the lips right off of New Orleans' face. But like I've said, it's the Saints, it's a division rival, it's Tom Brady. Somehow, some way, it'll be a close game, probably because Jameis will shred the secondary of Tampa Bay, considering it's ass. So I'm expecting it to be entertaining as hell, but Tampa Bay is going to come out on top. All right, and now it is time. This is the scorching pick. Halloween night. Dallas is going into Minnesota. They are going into U.S. Bank Stadium. Unfortunately for Dallas, Minnesota is celebrating a month that we like to call Kirktober. And after speaking with Kirk, he's told me that he plans to stretch Kirktober into Kirkvember. Meaning one thing, he comes home. Michael Myers, Kirktober himself, beats the Dallas Cowboys in U.S. Bank Stadium and shocks the world. Dallas, one of the worst secondaries in football. Kirk Cousins. Very solid, and I, I don't have a reason other than I'm just picking the Vikings on this one. Okay, I'm probably gonna take a fat fucking L. I got the Vikings upsetting Dallas 27 to 21. And finally, for the Monday Night Showdown, the moment we're all gonna be waiting for, the Giants going into Kansas City. Much like I said about Seattle, I can't really say much other than Kansas City finds a way. Here we go, if Kansas City loses to the Giants, that's it. Good night, Jim Kite, you're done. How can you come back from that one? Kansas City has a historically terrible defense right now. Historically, you can look that shit up. But the Giants defense hasn't been playing like the Giants defense should be. You know, other than against fucking Sam Darnold. And I think that the Chiefs offense should be able to dissect them and pick them apart enough to get a sustainable lead. Not saying they'll hold that lead, but it should be enough to narrowly squeak by him. I'm not going to give him a lot of credit here, but I got the Chiefs winning 23 to 19. All right, guys, and that is going to be all for my week eight NFL predictions. Come on, let me hear it in the comments. I'm ready. Better to acknowledge the boneheaded picks than try to defend them. But hey, I could be right. Who knows? I don't think either of them are unrealistic. So you got to give me credit on that. I hope you guys all liked this video, though. If you did, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, turn your notification bell on. I post every single day. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias or send something to my P.O. box, all that info will be in the description of this video as well. With all that stuff being said, guys, I'm going to hop off and edit this so you can watch it on time. I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of their Wednesday. And as always, I will see you in the next video.